When it comes to native fruit trees, the red mulberry, Morris rubra, tends to get forgotten about, which is a shame because it really is an awesome tree and prolific producer of tasty berries which help support a wide variety of wildlife. Although it does have a couple of characteristics you need to be aware of before you plant one, and I will get to those in a bit. Red mulberry has a large range in eastern North America and can be found growing in woodlands just about everywhere except northern New England and northern Michigan. It is also less common in Iowa, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. So how do you identify a red mulberry when you encounter one in the wild? Let's find out. This is a tree most often encountered growing in woodlands and forest edges in the wild, and it can handle deep shade to full sun with the best fruit production in full sun. The size and growth form of red mulberry is dependent on the amount of light it receives, and its mature size can vary from 25 to 60 feet in height with a 35 to 40 foot spread. Trees grown in an open setting with plenty of sunlight will tend to have shorter, thicker trunks and a rounded, full canopy. Trees grown in the shade will tend to be taller, thinner, and have a more irregular and open canopy. It is also a relatively fast-growing tree. Red mulberry is not picky about soils and will thrive in a wide variety of sandy to clay loams that are moist but well-drained. Once established, red mulberry is moderately drought-tolerant. It can also be a long-lived tree and has been known to reach 125 years of age. One super cool characteristic of red mulberry are its leaves. They can be found in three different shapes, often on the same tree. The most common red mulberry leaf shape is a large, rounded heart. The leaves can also be lobed and may be mitten-shaped or tri-lobed like a turkey foot or trident. Rarely, some leaves can be found that have five lobes. The heart-shaped leaves are the most common and are usually what make up most of the canopy. Lobed leaves are more common on new sprouts and lower branches. The leaves are arranged alternately on the stem. Leaf size is usually three to six inches long by two and a half to four inches wide, but they can get much larger in certain conditions. The edges of the leaves are coarsely toothed and there are two prominent lateral veins coming from the central vein at the base of the leaf. The upper leaf surface can vary from a dark to bright green. The lower surface is usually paler than the upper surface. The upper surface is usually rough to the touch. The lower surface has soft hairs which are found mainly along the leaf veins. The leaf characteristics of red mulberry can be quite variable, however, making identification by leaves alone tough at times. The fall color is a pleasing yellow gold. If you love learning about native fruit trees like the red mulberry, pretend that like button is a plump ripe mulberry and pick it. Red mulberry bark can be gray to brown with a reddish hue to it in the furrows and has prominent flat ridges that flake and curl. Twigs are brown to reddish brown and have scattered white lenticels, the raised bumps you see on the bark of many tree and shrub species. New growth is bright green and smooth. Since red mulberry can get decently tall, especially when growing in the woods, a pair of binoculars can come in handy for checking out leaves and looking for fruit way up in the tree's canopy, like these Vortex Diamondback HDs, which will allow you to see leaves way up there, or if you want to check out something awesome that you come across. It's also a good idea to have a field guide with you, like this Princeton Field Guide to Trees of North America, in case you need to sort some finer details out. I will put links for both the Vortex binoculars and the Trees of Eastern North America field guide in the description. The flowers are small, greenish yellow, and form in one to two inch long catkins, are mainly wind pollinated, and bloom from April to May depending on location. Red mulberry is a dioecious species, meaning there are male and female trees, so if you want to have fruit production, you're going to have to plant more than one, or you're going to have to plant known female stock. Luckily, red mulberry is very easy to propagate from cuttings, so finding known sex stock is quite easy. Of course, you will also need a male pollinator if there are no wild red mulberries around. Those flowers lead to the reason many of you are watching this video, the tasty mulberries. Mulberries resemble an elongated blackberry, and red mulberries can be from one to three inches long. A quick note here, there are several varieties of red mulberry that have been selected for fruit production and fruit size. Some of the better known varieties are Hicks Everbearing, Townsend, and Travis. The fruits start out a pale white green and ripen to red and eventually a deep purple black, sometime in May and June, depending on location. This is what's so cool about red mulberry. Our other native tree fruits, the persimmons, pawpaws, wild plums, crab apples, and cherries 
all ripen in the late summer or fall. Red mulberries are one of the few fruit resources available in the late spring to early summer, and everything is after them because of that. Not only do people find mulberries delicious, so do a huge variety of wildlife species. Mammals ranging from squirrels to foxes, of course the white-tailed deer, and even black bears will be foraging for every mulberry they can find on the ground or reach in the tree. Reptiles like the box turtle are also drawn to the berry feast. Of course, the main consumers of the berries are the huge number of birds that flock to feed on them. If a bird species eats fruit and it is in the area, you can find it in a berry-loaded mulberry tree. And while this is one of the main reasons people plant these awesome native fruit producers, it can also lead to some problems in certain situations. If you have ever handled, eaten, or otherwise been around mulberry fruit, you know that those dark, juicy berries are basically filled with purple dye. Anything they get smashed into or pooped onto, in the case of birds that have been eating them, has a very high probability of being stained. So you need to think carefully about where you're going to plant one if you don't want purple spots all over your car, house, sidewalk, or deck. Just something to think about. I know many of you watching are fine with some purple bird poop. I know it doesn't bother me. I'd rather enjoy watching the birds than have a pristine driveway. Birds are also at the root of another problem that's a possibility you must be aware of. Not only are those berries full of purple dye, they are also full of seeds. When the birds eat the berries, they are also processing those seeds, which they deposit along with the purple goop when they poop. In some situations, this can result in red mulberries popping up everywhere. I haven't personally seen this happen with red mulberry, but have heard it's a possibility. Interestingly, red mulberry isn't a super common tree in the wild, and it seems to be declining in many areas. So I'm not sure if the weediness is actually red mulberry, or if it's being attributed to red mulberry and it's actually happening with the introduced invasive mulberries, or possibly one of the hybrids produced between white mulberry and red mulberry for fruit production. If you have experience with growing red mulberry, please comment below about the weediness you've experienced or have not experienced while growing it. As I just alluded to, there are two species of mulberry considered invasive in North America. The white mulberry, Morris alba, and the black mulberry, Morris nigra, that are both still being sold. In fact, I was at a big box farm store just last week and they had a ton of black mulberries for sale, selling them as wildlife trees. So be aware of this and always check the label when you're buying a mulberry. Make sure it says Morris rubra on it and not Morris alba or Morris nigra, and that it's not one of the hybrids that's been produced, which will have Morris rubra ex alba on it. It also won't hurt to confirm the plant you are getting is in fact a red mulberry by checking the leaf characteristics. I plan to do a more detailed video on how to tell the red mulberry from the invasives, as there's quite a bit to it, and they can all hybridize also, which can further complicate things. The main keys to identifying red mulberry are the leaves have an upper surface that feels rough and the fruits are large, often over one and a quarter inches long. Another thing to be aware of is the milky white latex the plant exudes when injured and the unripe fruits of red mulberry are mildly toxic. This should come as no surprise as many plants with milky white sap are toxic on some level. Red mulberries are on the very low end of toxicity though and they're not much to worry about. General symptoms of eating unripe berries are stomach discomfort and possible hallucinations. Yes, you heard that correctly. Unripe mulberries can be mildly hallucinogenic. Ripe fruits are perfectly safe and fine to eat. The milky latex can also cause contact dermatitis, redness and itching of the skin in some people, but it is normally very mild. With these things in mind, it should be clear that the red mulberry may not be the best choice where it might impact less ecologically minded neighbors who value pristine concrete. There are other native fruit trees that don't make as mobile of a mess, like the American persimmon that is not only a great looking tree, but produces what I think is the best tasting native fruit. And you can learn all about it in this video and be sure to take some time and enjoy the nature in your backyard.